Well, uh, firstly, I, I feel quite honoured that um, you actually want to, or that I've been invited to come and, and chat to you about my, my thoughts. Customer, the customer experience and the customer journey is exceptionally important to me because I am heavily involved and have been for a number of years in hospitality. And it's very close to my heart. And it's something that I, that I do quite naturally, and I think you have to be very natural at it. Um, a lot of the staff, well, all the staff who do work for me uh, are on the same vein. And you need to have that naturalism when you're involved with the public because you need to be able to connect with them. And this is what, what's really important. I don't profess to know anything particular about your jobs, and I'm, I'm probably not going to say anything that's completely new, but I think what's important is just to kind of remember that as long as we all have the same goal, then we should be able to get there and have the same vision. So I, I've put it down as an interview with myself, Caroline Gregory, uh, Love at Arms down at Loch Ness, and I, I just want you to ask me as many questions as you want. I don't want this to be too formal. So um, before I start talking about myself, I wanted to actually find out a little bit about yourselves. So naturally, the, the first step uh, was to go onto the internet and uh, have a look on the Forestry Commission website. And it's broken down in two, three sections. So you have, you've got England, Scotland, and you've got Wales. Does anybody know what your mission statement is? You do, don't you? <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> I'll move on so we don't have to stick on that section. But it was interesting. So, uh, so I went on to uh, England's mission, and we've got here, uh, we are the government department responsible for protecting, expanding, and promoting the sustainable management of woodland and increasing their value to society and the environment. I'd be quite astounded if somebody from England remembered all of that. But, I mean, that's okay. It gives you a bit of a, an understanding of, of what they're all about. Um, then we go on to Scotland's. Uh, forestry Commission Scotland serves as a forestry dictatorate of the Scottish Government. For more details, go to About Us. Doesn't tell you a huge amount. Um, then we go to Wales. Oh, it's gone a little bit funny. Um, our mission is to deliver better woodlands for a better Wales. Our vision is that all woodland in Wales will be sustainably managed and valued by the people of Wales. For me, this is actually quite profound. It, it tells you a little bit more about Wales in terms of, you know, where it's actually going and it, it has a little bit more of a succinct message rather than the previous two. The reason that I'm putting this on show is because this is the customer's first impression on looking on the website and what they're actually going to see and first impressions are so important. So going back to the Scottish one which says you have to go to About Us, I went to the About Us and it comes up, so I wanted to dig a little deeper. And it comes up with, our mission is to protect and expand Scotland's forests and woodlands and increase their value to society and the environment. And this is all very fair and well because it obviously is specific to the forestry Scotland. But what is, is really interesting is the fact that you guys are digging even deeper and you're doing the 100,000 um, welcomes, which is on the pathway to excellence. Um, basically, 100,000 welcomes underpins hospitality assured and also... Uh, the European model of excellence, which you're, you're getting involved in at the moment. So for me, personally, um, what I need to do is I need to think about the experiences that I've had and I try and incorporate them into what I actually do, kind of what makes me tick, what do I remember, um, what, what makes an experience exceptional. Um, I've depicted here when I uh, went travelling, I went travelling for a year um, by myself and I spent two and a half months in India and this country is just incredible, culturally, religion, uh, people, it's so incredibly diverse, the food's amazing, the animals, you know, you can connect with so much there and lots of, uh, lots of that variety I have brought back um, and, and changed the way that can I, I have an outlook. And I think it's just really important to think about the experiences that you've had and what you want to pass on to somebody else. So I need everyone to put down their drinks and I'd like to do just a, a small exercise just to really demonstrate something that um, I want to put across to you. So where would you rather go if someone wants to go to Edinburgh or if you'd prefer Glasgow if you take either side of the room? So are you a... Uh, you can't... Well, you could be possibly down the middle, but... <laughs> So I'd say most people at Edinburgh, is that right? Okay, we've got three on the other side. And then we've got the next one. What do you prefer, TV or radio? <laughs> oh, bit half and half. And then the next one, holidaying. Activity based or lying on the beach? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> and you can all sit down now. Um, the, the reason I've just done, done this um, is, is purely just to show that even if someone has, a, a lot of people are activity based, but not everybody wanted to be in Edinburgh, not everybody wanted to be in, in Glasgow. So we have a huge difficulty within the hospitality industry because we have so many needs and wants that we have to satisfy. And it is a really, really tough uh, job that we, that we have to, um, to play with. And it, th there's no right and there's no wrong way. It's, it's just adapting and trying to kind of push a couple of buttons, figure out kind of what, what makes people do what they do and, and feel what they feel and kind of trying to tap into that. So everyone's needs, I don't know if you've gone into um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but basically we have the three <laughs> sections of, of needs at the bottom. And um, most people put this hierarchy to do with kind of motivation within uh, workforces. Um, but for me personally, I think that this actually works uh, across the board. Um, you need to make sure that if you're looking after somebody or, or in hospitality, that the basic needs of that person are, are satisfied, that they feel comfortable in their environment, that they do feel safe, that you're emotionally connecting with them. And then from that, you can take it to completely higher levels of exceptional customer service. So what makes uh, an experience <coughs> exceptional? For me, I, I feel that I need to connect with the people that I am around. Um, I need to connect with my, my workmates and that we all have exactly the same, uh, same goal. And also that I connect with the people that I'm, I'm trying to um, enhance their experience. Um, I do feel that a differential is exceptionally important. You need to have something that's a little bit different, something that's unique, something that makes you stand above, above everybody else, something that people are going to remember you, remember you about because that's what an experience is. If everybody had exactly the same experiences, it would become habit and it would be boring. So you need to get something that's, that's just that little bit quirky. You've got to take ownership of what you do. Um, you need to get involved, and that's what I mean by ownership. And just a, a kind of a collective development um, and a collective experience, I guess, for, for everybody to, um, to enjoy. Um, you need to be able to connect with people on an emotional level. I think this is exceptionally important to be able to understand their needs and their wants and what drives them. And you've also got to have a vision. Um, everyone has got to have the same vision so that you're all kind of singing the same, um, the same note. <coughs> so if you want to have a, a vacuum pack look at myself um i took over the love arms when i was 25 years old i got involved in hospitality from a very young age and i was born down in, in england but i've lived up in scotland all my life and uh, even though uh, I'm, I'm not specifically scottish due to my to my birthplace um, i have lived up here and, and scotland is exceptionally um, part of my life and i'm very passionate about it uh, I have lived and I have breathed hospitality from a very young age. My parents have been involved in the hotels for 30 plus years. Uh, so I, I have been around the hotel industry for a very long time. And I did try and break away from it and do something totally different. But I realised what I was particularly good at and what motivated me and what I was interested in. So um, I was living down in London and working down there and I was, uh, wasn't really enjoying what I was doing. My father uh, had retired and he's a workaholic and so we decided to come together and uh, look for a business venture. So he wanted a new hobby and I wanted a new kind of passion to get my teeth into. So we looked for various properties and we came across the Love at Arms and it worked really well for us because, because of its location. It was a natural place for us to pick and it was a, a, an area of specific beauty. Um, we saw a huge potential in, in the property. It was exceptionally run down, but we saw that there was something that we could work with, and we wanted to grab that opportunity. It's very central. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of tourists going in and out of the area, and obviously Loch Ness is a huge draw, so we wanted to tap into that.